Hello, everybody. This is another instance of AirOps Explained. A warm welcome from Berlin, as usual. And as usual, I'm here with Zane Ray from London. Today, we are going to show you a topic that was introduced in Tech Exchange last December on, on the Las Vegas instance and reshowed this year in, in the Barcelona Tech Exchange, so more or less brand new. And what does it show you? So we're going to connect an existing Netcool installation with more or less the new stuff. So the cloud pack for what's in AirOps, or as we say now, IBM cloud pack for AirOps. That's the latest and greatest branding for this product. Zane is going to lead you through and lead the demo part. I do have collected a few slides for that. So Zane, do you want to say hello? Yeah, hi everyone. This is basically for uh, people who may have some ex existing Netcool assets, maybe just Netcool components, or maybe they have um, operations in site uh, or a combination, um, and they're looking to stand up the Cloud Pack for AOPS, plug it in, switch it on, and get a whole load of new capability that they didn't have before. So that's what we're going to give you a high level overview of how to do that today. Very good. And as such, we do have a, an agenda. Given the fact you do have already a Netcool installation and that you have installed the Cloud Pack for AirOps in a cluster, it doesn't matter if it's locally installed in an OpenShift environment or in any cloud provider or in IBM's cloud on a ROX environment, for example. We are just combining the two things. So your existing Netcool installation Plus the new cloud pack capabilities in AirOps. Basically, how to set up the, the interactivity plus a few basic things to get the whole thing running. That's what we want to do. Before we go into the demo, we're going to make a short introduction of what the cloud pack itself is. So we haven't changed the story overall. So we are in the IBM IT automation space. And as such, we are having a portfolio which is coming from application performance management, network performance management. We're also doing network configuration management. We're then thriving over cost-effective resource management. We have Tobonomic here in the ranks. And lately, we have added the Etio capabilities, uh, which is a great story, but we're not going to cover that today. Today, we're here on the, on the right side. So we're doing having an environment which is providing us uh, with information about things that gone wrong and need fixing and how that is going to work and how that is combined. We do have two flavors of the product. One is the cloud pack. That's the feature-rich version of everything which inherited the Netcool capabilities. And we do have a pretty young version, which is the IBM AirOps Insights. That's a SaaS version. It's pretty much lightweight at the moment. We are working on it to make it uh, a little more feature-rich as the Cloud Pack itself. But this is what we're going to talk about. Event management, incident response, so how to get these kind of things combined your existing Netcool environment plus the new stuff. And uh, as such, uh, we haven't uh, changed the overall story. So here on the left side, we do see quite a lot of things pouring to the system. As, as you're a Netcool customer already, you do have event and alert management set up. What the Cloud Pack itself adds is, is capabilities of reading log files, um, enhancing the ticketing, information, we add topology to the whole side. We combine all that data with here in the middle, which the informed actionable insights. So out of this vast storm of information, we're combining things that belong to each other. Uh, we're using AI capabilities. We are using correlation capabilities. And we're trying to get the most important parts out of that. That's uh, actionable insights that we say. so. Somebody needs to look at that because you can automate only to a specific extent your environment. At, at the end of the day, you always need to have an operations team which is looking at the remaining things and, and really connect the open strings because even AI helps us on that way to, to make it a little bit more comprehensive, more understandable. But even then, you still can't automate 100%. You still need 
persons to look at your environment, have a decent domain knowledge, and then decide on what to do. That's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to show you uh, what are things, what are methods, what are tools that are provided by the cloud pack to enhance you on that story to, to take your existing netcool environment ahead to the new level to really augment your operations environment. The architecture itself is made out of your existing netcool layer. So as you see here from left to right, you see the dashboarding web GUI top of this pieces, the networking parts. We're not going to talk about the networking, so I've graded it out. So in the middle, we do have the omnibus pieces, which is uh, object service, probes, gateways, history reporting, all these kind of things. And to the right, we're doing having the impact engine. The impact engine adds external data. So we're able to create data pointers towards external data, something like CMDB, history DB, customer data, service level data, whatever seems suitable to make better decisions with your event management. Because basically what we see if we are just receiving events from the technology is how they are created. So the SMP track, for example, has the, the source in it. It has the MIP value in it. If you do have the um, translation between all these MIP values into some meaningful text, then you still don't know How's it related? So what are neighbors? Do we have any applications which may be impact in that environment? So we need extra information to, to really uh, make the decision how uh, important is that specific um, trap? Even if it says critical, we, we have gazillions of critical uh, traps at the same time in the system, but we really need to think about what are the important stuffs. Uh, that we start need to start working on. That's what we want to see. That's what we think is uh, adding this this augmented uh, operations capability, as we say it in our marketing jargon. That's exactly what we're going to to show you in in this piece. So we're enhancing the existing environment with the new stuff. That's what's just popped up. So this is the cloud pack for AOPS. So in there, this is a a microservice architecture, it runs on OpenShift, and its its idea is to really enhance an existing NetCore environment. It can be used also standalone, but that's not the story of today. Today, we're going to enhance an existing NetCore environment with all the new capabilities and show you where to start. Now, that's the point where I'm going to hand over to Zane. Please show me what we're going to see. We can see I've got uh, Omnibus and Impact installed. These are on traditional VMs. On the right-hand side in the event viewer, the event list, you can see I've got uh, various probes connected that are feeding events into Omnibus. What we're going to look at today is how to deploy AOPS and then connect it to your existing netcool uh, infrastructure and then have a new system uh, that you can then use in the AOPS world. So we're going to start with looking at OpenShift, where we have IBM Cloud Pack for AOPS deployed and we have deployed an instance of AIOps. After we've done that, we now have uh, an instance of AIOps we can log into. What we're going to do now is integrate this with our existing netcall environment. So the first thing we're going to do is to connect up uh, AIOps to our sources of data. As you can see here, we've got one for the object server, for Omnibus, and we've got one for Impact. So what I'll do is I'll just show you these uh, existing ones that I've already created. What you would normally do is click on Add Connection. So well, let's look at the ones that I've already created here. So Netcore Operations Inside Object Server. In here, there's a few steps to connecting this. The first thing to do would be to copy this SQL from these three windows and uh, run them against your object server. Once you've done that, we give your connection a name. Choose whether to de deploy it locally or remotely put in the username and password and the details of the object server. So the primary host name and port and the backup credentials if you have one. And call impact. In impact, we'll do a few little configuration steps to tell AOPS about our impact server and where it is. So first of all, the uh, endpoint for the uh, GUI server. 
the endpoint for the backend uh, API for impact, username and password. And then we um, put in here the certificate of both the GUI server and the backend server. One to our object server or omnibus and one for impact. Next, we're going to create some topology data. So for that, we'll go into observer jobs. And as you can see here, I've got a number of observer jobs that I've created. So this one is an Instana connector. This is a DNS topology data. This is a file observer job, a couple of those. Uh, and this is a Kubernetes uh, observer job. And we've also got a SEV1. So these are all created by adding a new job, selecting the appropriate type, and then defining the connection to that uh, particular one. So if we take a little look at this one, for example, banking network, it's a case of finding the file and then just running the job, letting the topology in. So now that I've got the connection to my events, to my automation with impact and my topology, we can move on to resource management and take a look at the topology and define some groups. So in this case, I've got a number of resources, a number of resource groups and a number of services defined. So how have these come to be? Well, the resources are there because I've run the observer jobs. Uh, to define groups of things, I've gone into the resource group template and defined a number of groups of things. Amongst these is applications. So this is coming from my application topology. In this case, I've defined a Cisco switch, Cisco 1000, uh, given it a naming pattern to follow, because this is a dynamic template, told it to correlate events, and then previewed those and saved that. So now I have groups of resources in my topology, which I can now see here. So you can see application Cisco 1000. So this has been uh, generated, this group of things has been generated as a, uh, from, from the creation of those groups that we just did then. If I click on view details, you can see the topology, you can see the items, and you can see their status as well. So clicking on one of these, I can then bring up the timeline and uh, see various events that have been going on on these resources in that, in that timeline. Next, we're going to go over to the automations, and we're going to create some actions and a runbook, which we're going to use uh, shortly. So these are a bunch of default policies. And we're going to jump first to the action. In here, we have a um, create application failure action, which if we hit at that, it's making a call to my impact server. And it's running this policy, create banking events. For the connection, it's an HTTP call to the impacts REST API, username, password, the name of the policy, uh, and a couple of other credentials. Once I've created that, I'll then also create another one calling clear application failure. So this is doing something very similar to that one. It's just calling a different policy, but it's also executing it on impact. Now that I've created a, a few actions, I'm going to jump into the runbook, and I'm going to create a runbook that will actually use some of those actions. So resolve Cisco link failure is a runbook that I've created that calls two of those actions. So the first one is reset switch, switch link. This is a resolve Cisco link failure runbook. First, to reset the switch link, and second, to clear the application failure alarm. So it's a, a two-step uh, automated runbook. Now that I've created that, I've got my policies here, and the policy uh, policy that I'm going to uh, use to assign events to the runbook, this one, assign link runbooks down. Uh, take a quick look at this policy, how it looks. You can see if the events created, and if they contain link down on or Cisco link uh, classification, then what it will do is assign this runbook, Resolve Cisco Link Failure, uh, and then save that. So now I've got everything I need to actually start to do some stuff in uh, the event list. So next, we're going to jump to the alerts, and we're going to launch the uh, scenario. Well, first of all, we'll click into the Configure the Alerts contextual menu to actually show this menu item in the menu. So it's simply a case of adding the menu item giving it a label and selecting the action. Now, in this case, it'll be the create application failure action. Okay. Once I've saved that, it's now available for use in my alerts along with all my other tools. First thing to see is you can see all the events that are streaming through from, from my omnibus system. So I'm gonna go ahead and create my application failure. This is launching an impact policy, which is creating the sample events. So. After a few seconds, we should see the events appear. Now, because I created that group template, the alerts have been associated with the topology, and uh, I selected to uh, correlate the events. The events should group together when they have finally come through from Omnibus. Right, so you can see there's a group of eight events. 
I click on the correlation bar, you can see they've been correlated together because they're all part of the same group. So you can see in here the resource group name, they're grouped via this group that we created earlier. These alerts have all been correlated together. This has also resulted in an incident being created. If we go to the incidents view, you can see linked down on slot one is a P1 incident. Incidentally, over in resource management, you'll also see my resource group applications has now got a P1 associated against it. So let's go back to the incident view and let's take a look at the incident. Going into the incident, we can see a number of things. On the left hand side, see the probable cause alerts. Probable cause of this particular incident is pointing to the link down on slot one. And on the right hand side, I can see it's created a ServiceNow ticket for me because I have a ServiceNow integration and it's also uh, impacting the application service, which I defined earlier. Okay, so you can see the number one probable cause ranking is this link down on slot one. So if we look at the topology view, it's going to show us these alerts in the context of the topology. And I can see the applications at one end of this chain and the database server at the other end. And in the middle, this link has gone down on the switch and it's indicated with a one. So I think the picture is pretty clear. All these application failures are related to the fact that they can't talk to the database. So what I can do here in the activity tab is I can collaborate with my colleagues. I can see a forensic trail of the alerts that have occurred and be correlated together, and I can add my own updates. The next thing I can see at the bottom here is that this runbook has been uh, associated with this incident because uh, it matches to an event that's been correlated into this incident. I'm therefore going to run this runbook. You can see my two-step runbook that I created earlier, reset switch link and clear application failure. Let's go ahead and run that. First step is to reset the switch link. I'm going to click run. It's completed successfully. And then step two, I'm going to clear the application failure alarms. And that has completed successfully as well. And mark that as complete and provide some feedback. I can see that the alarms are now clear. And I can see that the incident is now resolved here. Thank you, Zain. That was a fantastic overview of how a NetCool environment can be enhanced with the new capabilities of the CloudPick. I really love it. Uh, setting up all these resource groups and run books and all these uh, nice new things. So part of those are available in the IBM NetCore Operations Insight portfolio as well. But all the capabilities with uh, performance data, with metrics, with log data, that is really down to the cloud pack. That is the most feature-rich offering that we have in the market. And uh, if you're interested in the documentation, so this is the latest and greatest version. At the moment, we're having version 4.3 out there in the market. In a couple of days, we're going to release, hopefully, 4.4. So if you want to go for the latest and greatest documentation, you can see in here on top, latest. So there is no versioning in here. So this is one of those uh, little enhancements that we do introduce in the product over time. and. If you type in here latest, then you're always taken to the latest version of the documentation. I think pretty handy because before that I was updating my links with uh, every single version I had. And that's a little bit, uh, not nasty, but superfluous. And now that's fixed. Nice. I really love it. And uh, what else do we have? So we do have a community. We do have offering management, which is sometimes posting stuff. Uh, we have development there. People like Zane and me are uh, quite regularly in this group or our distinguished engineer like Isabel Sipley. We're all posting to this community. So please be welcome. This is open to everybody, not just our users. So all you need is an IBM ID, then you can uh, join the group and uh, join the conversation. That's the community. And we also have training and certification available. So there are two classrooms set up. One is the installation class. It's the ITS TN403G class. And the other one is the administration class. That's the code ITS TN44G. These are the two face-to-face -face classes that we have available. I, I urge you to, to join these classes. There's a couple of online stuff also available, besides the videos, of course. 
have a look. There is a training path uh, available. And if you really want to show how much you're in it, you can uh, go for the Prometrics certification. These are our IBM trusted certification centers. You need to register for a certification. You need to pay money for the registration. Or you see us on one of our uh, shows, uh, like in Las Vegas or anywhere other, like Tech Exchange or Think. There we do have these kind of certifications free of charge. You can try your knowledge out there as you step by in the certification booth. So that's available. Then you would get one of those lovely badges. So IBM Certified Administrator for uh, What's in Ops, it says version 3.4. We're going to renew the certification for the latest version four, I think. That was the, the last talk I heard. There is also on GitHub something like a gem in a box. So uh, make sure you're trying out that link as well. That gets you extra knowledge about this, this whole training environment, how it works. And uh, last but not least, uh, we do have these videos which is uh, recorded on YouTube. So I'm going to publish there regularly. It's in the IBM Support TV channel. And we do have lots and lots of those videos. It's in, in the 40s still. We're cracking the 50s uh, anyway soon. And there are a lot of things that, that might be interesting for you because we have divided those videos in three parts. Uh, first is the what is part. So we're explaining a specific topic, for example, what is uh, noise reduction. Uh, the second part is how to install this kind of thing. So for example, how to install the cloud pack uh, for AI ops and uh, get it running. And the, the third part is a deep down uh, discussion into uh, what are the best practices, what do uh, kind of insights do we have to get it running, these kind of things. So these are the three pieces that we have covered in this uh, video series. So what we looked at today in AOPS and getting started with Netcool was just, you know, some sample ideas of how to get off to a quick start. There's so much more you can do with the Cloud Pack. And um, yeah, look out for more videos and um, best practices guides and so on um, that will help you get started. Uh, and get using uh, other parts of AOPS as well. Thank you, Zane. That was cool. Um, thank you again, your beloved audience, for your time spending looking this video, and see you another time. Bye.